Sydney is a city reinventing itself as a sky-rise megapolis. Sydney ciders are evolving too, embracing both high-rise and a high-speed way of life. A web of Wi-Fi devices has changed both work and play. Urban designer Martin Tomic says huge shifts are now underway. We can already see the end of the family car sort of coming in the near future. The new generation growing up um, doesn't save up to buy a car. What is much more important for them is being connected with their friends um, through social media. And the next big tech revolution? The driverless car. Feel sceptical? Driverless trucks already haul ore on Australian mine sites. Sydney's driverless metro trains will launch in three years. The self-driving car is next. Developers say current test models could be ready for sale in as little as five years. But are Australians ready to share the streets with robotic vehicles? They're afraid that it will not stop. They're, they're afraid of collisions, so that it won't see a pedestrian crossing the road. It won't see the car next to them. Um, so that's one of the fundamental fears is, is about that. It's about trust. Despite these fears, the Tesla Model 3 was on show at Sydney University's recent Festival of Urbanism. The all-electric, all-luxury sedan has the added cachet of built-in self-driving capabilities, ready to switch on when road rules catch up with the technology. You could call up a, a car from your smartphone to come pick you up to do a short journey, or there might be small um, minibuses, if you like, that are driverless, that are shared forms that you can, again, it's called transit on demand. Experts say having on-demand driverless vehicles may actually help us catch more public transport. That could also be, say, workplaces that might want to use autonomous cars to get all their workers, if they're two kilometres from a railway station, you can imagine a, a, a shared autonomous car that takes everyone from the train station to work in the morning and, and back again. Transit on demand is already exciting the care sector. Here at Royal North Shore Hospital, quadriplegic Greg Colleen is riding in a wheelchair accessible share car. The uh, car sharing model is fantastic. That enables people who've got a driver, that they can book the car to be able to go out to events, to functions, to family outings, to weddings, uh, parties and funerals. This pilot service costs as little as $8 an hour, but for now users need to provide their own driver. The introduction of driverless cars will be fantastic for people with disability. To be able to simply go to the vehicle, get inside and then have it to drive from point to point uh, with independently will just be of great uh, quality of life for people with disability. We are uh, looking at autonomous cars as almost anybody in the transportation space is. Uh, it's the buzzword, it's, it's the thing that's happening and for good reason because it's going to be the future. So we've been Josh Bridges is a planner for car share service GoGet, a company getting ready to go driverless. 13 years ago GoGet had less than 10 users. So every single dot is a member as it grows in membership, you can see that it starts getting uh, brighter and brighter and brighter until you get to essentially today, which is the inner city almost completely full. Today, around 80,000 people access their network of cars, vans and utes. GoGet say each share vehicle eliminates at least a dozen other private cars from the road and from car parks. We're here in Central Park in the centre of Sydney and there's no on-street parking but thousands of people. Where are the cars? Hidden underneath this high-rise complex is a car share hub accessible by smart card. In Sydney, major developments are increasingly offering buyers car share access as a cheaper alternative to owning a car and a private car space. We're looking at off-streets as sort of a, an overflow um, and as a way to reduce the impact of, of these new buildings that are going in. We have all of this land that's currently reserved for parking that we can free up and turn into parks. Uh, we might reduce the width of roads in some cases. While driverless cars will transform urban planning, driverless trucks may one day revolutionise the freight industry.
Moving goods around the city is one of the key contributors to congestion. If you think about the ways that we have so many vans delivering things with online shopping, and if we can get the city uh, infrastructure right and roads infrastructure right, then freight would be a really good way to implement driverless vehicles. With clever implementation, driverless technology could free up streets for walkers. We'll actually have an opportunity to start thinking about designing for pedestrians rather than for vehicles. The sky's the limit on, on the benefit that we can see as a society. And people opt for walking or cycling or public transport. And then they use a shared autonomous car when they need it. Um, that'll reduce congestion, it'll reduce the amount of parking we need. So will authorities greenlight the driverless future? What's certain is a safety and regulatory debate is looming. I think that the planners should have an open mind and looking at uh, integration and universal access universal design to ensure that all people with disability and the wider community have the same opportunities. They should be looking at ways of making it happen.